Well, people, my hand has been forced. I have no other choice. I have to do another presidential election prediction map. If you're getting tired of them, well, I'm sorry. I can't help you there. I literally have no choice as to how I run my channel. I mean, I again, I'm. it's dictated by the uh, political realities of the day. And that's I'm being slightly hyperbolic here. But uh, all that to say, we're going to do a, another presidential election map prediction. Uh, this is the first one on my channel between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. So, uh... Let's get into it. Man, wasn't this a good intro? America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. So today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Uh, so far I've done three presidential election map predictions. I did Trump versus Biden three times. One with looking at polling from RCP. One with looking at polling from DDHQ in the Hill. One looking at polling from uh, 538. So we've done all that. And the fact is, there's actually been a surprisingly few number of polls that have come out specifically in the swing states between Trump and Harris yet. Um, again, there have been some, but not enough to really get an informed opinion yet as far as an aggregate really goes. So uh, we've seen a lot of national polls that don't look great for Trump, not as good as they did against Biden anyway. So today, what we're going to be doing is doing something very risky, and we're going to be doing this strictly off my opinion. I'm not going to be doing it based off anything else, and uh, I'm not even going to have a set uh, tilt, lean, likely, uh, safe. Like, you know, tilt is up to two points, like uh, say lean is up to, uh, you know, four points or whatever. We're just going to kind of wing it, partly because I don't have a lot of time, to be honest with you, to, to make this episode. But more so, it kind of accurately reflects, I think, the political environment of the day, uh, a lot of unpredictability. And um, I just think this is how we're going to do it today. And if you don't like my opinion, well, oh well. You can say I'm being biased or not looking at the data or whatever. I know. It's my opinion. So we're going to start up here in the Northeast. Uh, Kamala Harris will safely win Maine's first congressional district. Uh, she'll win Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Uh, let's go do down here. New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, D.C. Uh, where else? Where else? Where else? New York is going to be safe for her. And I went too far. One second. There we go. New York. Uh, where else we got? We got Washington, Oregon, California, Illinois. And let me see. Am I missing anything else? Hawaii. I'm missing Hawaii. And Colorado is going to safely go to her as well. Um, <clears throat> if we're just saying off the top of my head, safe is a margin of 10 points or more, I'm going to leave New Mexico out of the safe margin for her. But let's go ahead and put it in the likely category for Kamala. Do we have anywhere else we want to put in likely category? Not Minnesota, I don't think. Um, I think Virginia, maybe not safe. It might go lean. Um, <clears throat> Trump's not going to do as well in Virginia as the polls have been saying. Uh, he's ticked off a lot of conservatives here. There's also a very strong anti-Trump feeling even in the establishment here, I think. So I uh, I think we're going to cool it on Virginia. I think Virginia's going to be a lean. Uh, Harris State, so we might as well go ahead and make it that. Uh, Virginia's going to lean Harris. Minnesota's going to lean Harris. Do we have anything else? Let me see here. I don't believe so. So let's move on to our safe Trump states. We've got Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah. We've got North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska's first uh, and third district state as, as a whole. New uh, Nebraska's second is going to remain unchecked for now. Arkansas, Louisiana. West Virginia, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida. Yes, I still think Florida is going to be safe Trump this year. I can see an argument for it being likely if we're going under 10 points. Let's put it, if we're, if we're saying 10 points or more is safe, let's put it at likely Trump. Because I'm, gonna, I'm guessing it's going to be about an 8 or 9 point win for Trump. Texas, I think, could very well go to Trump 10 or more. But let's also put it likely, just in case. I think, again, we could be seeing more of an 8 or 9 point uh, game there. So, we've got our remaining states. Oh, also Maine's 2nd Congressional District. That leads us to Maine State as a whole. There's been a lot of talk of, um, of Trump flipping Maine. Here's the deal. Let's, let's get really real here for a second. A lot of these northern states... Um, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Maine, specifically. Kamala Harris might not do as well as Joe Biden. It depends on how they get her, like, how 
badly they're able to attack Trump, how effective their attacks against Trump are, as with any candidate, and how much they're able to promote Kamala, as with any candidate. But the fact is, a black woman in those states is going to be less popular than a white guy, and that's just a fact. Down here in uh, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, which by the way I meant to put South Carolina to save Trump, um, that could very well change. I think Kamala might do better down here than um, Biden would, and that reminds me of Alaska as well, sorry, safe. Um, so the fact is, whether you like it or not, racial identity and politics does play into people's decision making, and you can blame it on the old heads, the old boomers with their, all their racist opinions. That's more the media than anything else, probably. The media is the one that's been promoting identity politics relentlessly, all forms of media, I mean, print, digital, cable, everything identity politics for years and years and years and years. And the fact is, uh, if you've ever been in the North and you've been in the South, it's exactly opposite of what most people would think. Uh, most people do think due to their lack of uh, understanding of history. Generally, my, racial minorities are much more well-received in the South than they are in the North, partly because of just general personality. Southerners tend to be much more nice and polite. Northerners tend to be not Midwest Northerners so much, but Northeasterners specifically tend to be a little bit more uptight, a bit more rude, a bit more uh, territorial, so to speak. So um, you don't have to like that, and I might have just offended a lot of people, and that's all right. Um, again, you want some real Civil War history, I'm going to hopefully remember to put a card here in the top, uh, I think that would be the top right corner of the video for you to watch my interview with a Civil War historian. If you really want, if you think you can take all the, uh, all the incorrect opinions in there, uh, well then, you know, go check that out. It's history, so it may offend you. Anyway, all that to say... Uh, Maine, I still think, is going to go to Harris, but again, identity politics is going to be a factor in this. So we're going to put Maine's statewide as a whole as a lean Harris. But yeah, it, we could definitely see a three to four point win here. It could be chopped down her margins. New Hampshire, I'm not convinced couldn't flip to Trump. Um, as of now, again, I don't think the polling has really borne out that it could. Trump usually overperforms the polling. He may not this year because the polling is looking so good for him. If he does overperform the polling, both nationally and in the swing states, it's not going to be even close. But New Hampshire, again, I'm trying to be ultra realistic here. I think we're going to say New Hampshire is a tilt Harris state, but I mean, this could be within two points. It could be a very close state. And uh, so keep an eye on it on election night. Uh, moving on here, let's look at Georgia next. So I mentioned. I think Trump may actually do better against Harris than he would against Biden in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. I think he'll do worse against Harris in Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, but he was already ahead of Biden by so much that I think he can still win those states. Because of that, Georgia, I think, wrong color, Georgia is a lean Trump state, I think. I think we're going to see a three to four point win in Georgia form. Arizona, I'm not as confident just because it's been shifting left. The polls looked good for him, but Arizona too. A lot of election problems recently. 2020, they had all the problems. 2022, the midterm elections seem to be much more fair across the entire country, but Maricopa County still had their problems with their ballot machines on election day. So I think what we're going to do with Arizona is place it as a tilt Trump. I'm not super confident that he's going to win it, but I do still think he's the, the betting favorite. Uh, Nevada also, I've been predicting to flip for a long time, like I've said. Uh, Harris is going to do better there than Biden would. So again, I'm not near as confident as I have been. Most of my videos have been a lean. Maybe all of it has been, a, at least the past couple, has been a lean uh, Trump state. It's going to be tilt now. I think that could be within a point. If it's legit, I think Trump will still win it, but we'll see. North Carolina, I think, is going to vote about the same as Georgia. North Carolina is going to be a lean Trump state. Um, North Carolina is a state that's been pretty consistently actually kind of a purplish state, but purplish red. Uh, in the past many, I think it's the past eight statewide elections, Republicans have uh, won with the exception of Roy Cooper uh, for governor. I think they've won everything else statewide, for at least for Senate and president, and I think lieutenant governor and attorney general. I don't think they've lost those in a while either. I know Mark Robinson is the current lieutenant governor there. I think the attorney general is a Republican, but I'm not positive. Roy Cooper is kind of the anomaly there. So, North Carolina is probably going to vote for Trump by about the same margin as Georgia. So that puts Trump at 268, needing again one of the Rust Belt states to flip um, on this map. So Wisconsin was his, actually not his best looking state, it was Pennsylvania, but historically Wisconsin is where 
Republicans have the least trouble when you compare them, uh, compare Wisconsin to Michigan and Pennsylvania. And I've said Wisconsin is a tilt Trump state for a while, and I think it still is. I think Harris is going to do better in, than Biden there in terms of Biden was super unpopular. But again, you've got the racial identity politics as well, the racial uh, demographics. There are a lot of whites up in the North. I'm just saying I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, like, we should, I'm not calling for segregation of states. You know, that's the Democrats' job. But the point being with all that, Again, racial politics, she'll do better than Biden. She will do better with Biden than some votes, like with the young vote, but with the older historical Democrats, like old, you know, 80 plus year old, uh, you know, white, specifically white men, a lot of them will not vote for a woman and will not vote for a black person. And I'm just saying that's the case. You don't have to like me for it and you can get mad at me. I'm not saying that's right, okay? I'm just saying that's the case. So, as I have, um, observed politics to be so again you can love it you can hate it it'd be kind of weird if you loved it but you can hate it but don't get mad at me don't shoot the messenger so uh let's go ahead and take care of nebraska's second congressional district uh i think this one's going to go to harris um i think she's going to keep it in the democrat category by a tilt margin i know historically these three states vote with each other but uh, Michigan does tend to be the most liberal of the three, and I think Harris can do reasonably well here. I don't think she's incredibly disliked. Michigan's a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, urban as opposed to rural. Wisconsin's more rural. Uh, Michigan is obviously a lot of it too, but you do have areas like Detroit, Lansing in there. So Michigan, we're going to say tilts Harris still. I think she's going to keep that in the Dem category. At this point, Trump's already got the nomination, but can he win, you know, uh, the rest of these states, which I guess at this point is down to Pennsylvania. Can you tell this episode a bit unscripted? I'm a little bit off. I'm not quite, uh, I don't have all my notes in front of me and I don't have the polling in front of me and everything. So I've actually filmed two episodes tonight. Another one's going to be released hopefully as a midweek special. So stay tuned for that, uh, recapping the, the, what we know so far about the Trump shooting. But anyway, this map, uh, you know, video quality, regardless, whatever, uh, we're going to say this map is going to be complete with Pennsylvania and I'm going to say Pennsylvania is a toss-up. And I know the polling would not bear that out. I was almost going to put it as a tilt Republican state, but I think Pennsylvania, I just don't know. Pennsylvania is a little bit fishy recently in terms of their uh, election laws, and I'll leave it at that. That could factor into the election a little bit. I'm not exactly positive how she's going, uh, how Harris contrasts with Biden there, but I think she will do better than Biden was going to. Um, but again, how can the two candidates portray each other? Can Trump portray Harris as the wacky, unserious, I'm going to ban fracking and fossil fuels candidate? That would play well in Michigan for him. Can Harris frame him as, you know, literally Hitler, like the Democrats have been trying to do for eight years, which that's what she'll be doing across the entire, uh, every state. It's not unique to Pennsylvania. But all that said, I think this is my map where I currently have it. Trump does still win with 278 electoral votes. It's not me as comfortable, though, as it would have been maybe against Biden. Everyone's saying, talking a lot more conf confidently that we would have beaten Biden uh, now than they we were before he dropped out. Uh, hindsight is twenty twenty in theory, but we'll, I guess we'll never know how well Biden would have done against Trump. So with all that said, this is how I think Trump's going to do against Harris right now. Um, come November, this is my current prediction, but... Let me know. I've said, uh, you know, I've, I've said, touched on some political realities that you're not really supposed to on this video. So if you'd like to help me grow the channel, and uh, I promise you the most conservative commentary online, and I'm not going to not say things for fear of being censored, whether that be by, uh, you know, losing a sponsor or, you know, censored by YouTube or Facebook or whatever the platform. So if you want to help me out, feel free to click that subscribe button and uh, let's roll that end card. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.